Hello there. I'm Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and I work in watercolor and markers and pencils, all different sorts of mediums. And where whatever medium you work in and wherever you are in the world, you are welcome here. I'm going to be painting this one today. It's what I created for my gift guide over on my website. Links in the doobly-doo after the video if you want to go see that. This is one of those paintings that is embarrassing from about the beginning until almost at the end. And I considered not sharing it because I shared the finished painting on the gift guide page, but I thought nobody needs to see this ugly process. And then I went, wait a minute, people love to see the ugly process because that can give you encouragement to keep going. And I always have been saying for years now, don't give up on that piece of paper. Learn everything you can from it. And that is basically what you'll be seeing me do. I'm just going to uh, speed this up in a minute here so we don't spend all day looking at the hideousness of what is happening here. Um, just so you know, I had been so busy working on the gift guide for weeks and weeks and weeks. I barely, barely made any art for weeks simply because I was working on the gift guide. It was so much labor. And if you haven't gone to see it, please, there's a link in the doobly-doo, go check it out. But in the process of that, I was feeling very out of practice with watercolor. And I hadn't done any large paintings. I had done a few little small things, but like I hadn't done a big full wash in a background in quite some time. And the only way to practice that is to do it full size in my mind. At least that, that's what works for me. You can practice on a small piece, absolutely. And you can maybe work out your colors. I had an idea what I wanted to do with my colors. But practicing it as a small rectangle is not going to help you get to the place where a large painting is going to work. So I just decided I'm going to go for it. I got a quarter sheet out and went at it you can see it is not going great. The second pass I'm putting on while the first is still wet. So, you know, darkening up the sky on top, creating a bit of a glow in the middle, and then a mountain is gonna be in the bottom. So made some brighter colors down there and had the board tipped up so that the paint would move a little bit. And at, at this point I decided to try something because this was going badly enough, I thought, if I'm going to try it, let me try it now. And it's to add some uh, iridescent electric blue. It does a little bit of what nickel azo can sometimes do, which is like burst out into other colors. It does a really cool effect. And I thought, well, if I'm going to try it, let me try it here because I think this painting is wrecked. I think this paper is destined for the circular file. And I also decided I was going to try something with the moon, pulling in colors by, while the paint is still wet, adding some water into the moon and letting it just seep into some of the areas where they touch. And then lifting some back out because I had a little bit much and I wanted to stop it from going overly crazy. But I knew I was going to paint more layers on it because I wanted this to be darker. Now the color rendition when you're painting something dark is not always great. You know, I guess my my camera needs replaced. It's uh, it, it gotten worse over the years, but the color is still really pale in the under layers. And I knew I was going to paint more on there. So that allowed me to paint negatively around the moon to clean up those edges. And here's where I'm, you know, kind of throwing in a little bit of mushiness because Santa's sleigh was going to go across there. And I knew I would add some kind of sparklies where the sleigh went. So I roughed it up a little bit more. I ended up with an edge drying up at the top, but for the most part, I just kept telling myself, don't stress out about it. Just keep putting layers on. Let's see how many layers it takes to make this work. And if I can get it to mostly work, then the second piece of paper that I try this with, I'll be able to succeed on. And a lot of times that's how my paintings first start out because I, I try something and I think it'll work and I discover maybe something new that didn't exactly work or I thought of a new way to approach it while I was working on the first test. And 
it was just coming out to be a mess. I was like, this is not going to, to work at all. But I also wanted to add in a little bit more sparkle in here. So I took some Indian yellow, dropped some in. That's the kind of burst I was hoping to get from a little bit of the iridescent electric blue. And it does that a little bit, but you can see it not as prominently. So dried all that part up and then decided I was going to add some more into the ground and, you know, really start to firm up the hillsides that I wanted in the distance because I wanted something that you're looking through the trees to see the hillsides and then you see the sky and and Santa Claus and everything. And there was going to be a lot of stars up in top, but I almost said, you know, let me not practice the stars. I don't need to practice those. Let me just get some practice with my needle brush making some trees because I haven't painted these kind of trees in a while. Let me just use this piece of paper to its fullest. Like I said, don't throw your piece of paper away too early. Now, it's not to say that every time you don't throw it away is going to turn out to be a success. You know, sometimes it's just literally going to be a practice painting. Other times, you might find ways to recover it. And I didn't know which way this was going, but my assumption was this was not going well and I would end up chucking it. But I'm just going to keep practicing because... I'm, I'm here. I've got a piece of paper that's already been painted on. There's nothing else I can do with it. So I'm just going to continue. I decided to try the iridescent white uh, watercolor grounds for the stars. Did not go all that well because the iridescent white watercolor grounds are very thin. And it was just really hard to get it to flick off of the toothbrush onto the paper. And a lot of it you can see just kind of came out in large blobs, which doesn't look very very star-like. It looks like lots of little tiny shooting stars in different directions. So I ended up taking a brush and the same colors that I'd used in the sky and painting over parts of them and tried to break them up so they didn't look like I had little lines everywhere. Next was to try to see what it would be like to paint the reindeer in here. And I was like, okay, this is maybe not going to work. So I'm not going to put a lot of effort into my reindeer. So I just made a little body a little head sticking up, some indications of legs underneath of them. I wasn't really worried about trying to make them look great. They do end up looking a little bit like dogs flying through the sky. I did end up adding just a little bit of antlers to them <laughs> eventually. But, you know, I added Santa in here and the whole thing, I was just like, okay, this is just practice, so that's fine. Just practicing. Because I, I wasn't happy with the way that the sky had gone anyway with the stars. So I really was just pretty sure that this was not going to be a thing. So next I took some white gouache and created the sparkle coming from Santa. And I let it cascade over top of the reindeer enough that they kind of feel like they're in the mist. And it lightened them and I kind of started liking it right at that point. Not greatly, because I still thought maybe this thing was not going to be recoverable, but at least I had minimized them because the whole idea that I wanted in this was to have Santa in there, but not so prominently. I didn't want it to be like a major thing about Santa Claus. I have some cousins that I'm going to be giving this to as a thank you gift when I get to go stay with them in a couple of weeks for mom's memorial. And they love Santa Claus. And they tried to buy one of my Santa Claus, my older Santa Claus paintings, and it had already sold and they were sad. So I thought this would be a great thing to do for them as a thank you gift for uh, hosting me. So I thought, okay, well, I don't know where this is going, but let me try the trees. Let me, you know, go a little bit further with them because I knew I needed to have some more darker color in the foreground. And I wanted to see what it was going to take to try to get it to be not completely solid because I wanted it to feel like watercolor, but sell it enough that it felt very different than the sky because I put a ton of clout, a uh, ton of stars up in the sky. And I wanted to see how this all played off of Santa and the trail of like glittered magic dust or whatever it is. And it was also more tree practice. So I was getting closer to thinking this might be survivable, but it wasn't until I got all the way across the page with the rest of these trees and then my dogs needed to go outside there was like a squirrel or something vicious out in the backyard they were going bananas 
and I got up to go let them out. And I came back and I saw my painting on the table. And I went, wow, that was kind of amazing. That actually works. But it took me walking out of the room and coming back into the room and seeing it a little bit fresh to realize what I had in front of me. And a lot of times I think that happens with us as artists. We're like, this is terrible. It's terrible. I'm looking at it up close. I know exactly where all my failures are. And we just chuck it. We just decide we're done with this and we throw it away before we even give it a chance. Now, as I said, it does not mean that continuing to work on a painting is going to make it, force it to come out right. But walking away right after I finished that last tree and then coming back, the thing I wanted to fix was even pushing those reindeer a little bit further back into the moon and letting the glow of the moon overtake them even more so that they kind of disappear into it. And then I decided to add some more trees on top of all of that you know, glittery magic dust so that it pushed the, the Santa and the moon and the reindeer even further behind. And I was then just faced with all the little details. How many of these trees would I add? How much of the trees in the foreground would get darker so that those little stray white dots uh, didn't show up? Uh, quite as prominently and that sort of thing? Or did I want to add snow into them? I, I decided in the end not to, simply because I wanted a simpler painting for the gift guide page. When all was said and done, I actually liked this painting a lot, even after I didn't expect to be able to save it. So I want to give you that encouragement to keep pursuing that piece of paper. You may come out with a finished painting. You may just come out with more practice under your belt so the next time you can succeed, but don't give up on it. Just use that piece of paper to learn all you can. And if you'd like to go see the artist gift guide, do some shopping, see some ideas for things that you could give or receive for the holidays this year, go check it out. Links in the doobly-doo. I'll see you again next time on Saturday for another watercolor painting, much easier one in that video. I will see you then. Take care. Bye-bye. <music>